Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hi, how are you? I hope you are doing amazingly well. And today what I'm going to be showing is my August slash September plant favorites. August really passed me by quickly and so did September. There was a, a lot of things that I did along with a lot of emotions, along with just trying to get everything in order. So I figured I'd put them all together in one video and show you what I have. If you're new here, I do plant content. I share um, my journey with plants. I share my favorites, sometimes projects and all the things. So thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and just get right started with the video. So August, I went back to California. Uh, if you did not know, I am originally from California, specifically from Long Beach, California. Yeah, California. Anyways, and I went back to visit my family. And so while I was there, I did a little plant shopping and I found some of my favorite plants and some of my wish list plants there as well. I am a huge cactus lover. I call them the beefs. And these are a couple of the ones that I found there. This one is actually not considered a cactus. This is a euphorbia, which is in the succulent family. But I have been wanting a euphorbia ghost for years now. And anytime that I found them, they were either super expensive or just small. So this was one that I actually got uh, as a gift for my birthday. And I love it. Um, I had it outside during the summertime, and so now during the fall and winter, I actually have it here in the corner where I have my beef bar that I've kind of created. I love when it gets sun, it changes to this little pink, those pink tips, those pink fiery tips, and it is so fun. I know, I feel like cactus don't get an accurate representation of how amazing they truly are and how hardy they are but just how cool they are. They have, they definitely have my heart. So yeah, Euphorbia Ghost is my first one. And while I was in California, I actually met up with um, some plant friends there and they invited me to their home, which has a, they have a greenhouse in their home. It's absolutely amazing. And while I was there, they gifted me their cactus and this is her so it's a mammalaria i will put full name on here because i'm not going to butcher this name but it is so stunning and unique and it looks like eyeballs or spiky grapes <laughs> i don't know but they are so cool I don't have any mammalarias in my collection. Now this one, it, along with the other plants that I purchased, I had I think like seven cacti and one uh, monstera. And I did take it on the plane with me. This is the one that I like made sure that was fully secure because they gifted it to me in this pot too. And this whole setup is it, just perfect. But it, it has some weight on it. So I carried it like this through the airport. And in my bag, I made sure that I held it tight and nicely and it made it just fine. So definitely one that I would recommend if you are interested in a unique cactus and it's just fun. I think from here it kind of looks like brains. I just want to take a moment and say if you don't know how to pronounce all these plant names, like don't feel bad the fact that most of them are so difficult to pronounce their actual latin name i don't want it to deter you from owning cactus why do you think i call them the beefs because goodness knows i struggle with pronunciation you just go by the common name that doesn't make you any less of a plant person we did not all study latin Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear his breathing, but he will not let me be here. Are you okay? Do you want to be part of the favorites? Sweet. You want to be a plenty favorite too? You're the 
a snooch. Every time, never fails. Thank you very much. For my birthday, uh, for the month of August, I decided I am going to treat myself for my birthday and I'm going to buy myself a well-established plant. And so I bought two of them. The first one that I purchased was this Monstera Escaletto. The Escaletto is like the big sister of the Monstera had in Sony Eye. And I have been looking for one for a while as well. It's just, it wasn't the time. I didn't have the designated space for him. I didn't find him at the right price at that time. And so I finally did it. I said, I'm gonna treat myself. And I treated myself to this baby. And I'm happy about it. I will probably eventually give it a um, support pull and when I say support pull it is not a moss pull I am I just I can't do moss pulls like it's not my favorite it's a lot of work I have plenty of plants to water and I, the thought of watering moss pulls just makes me cringe it really does so <laughs> I will be giving it a um, trellis or a plank of some sorts eventually but I did get a new leaf already, which is the one in front right here. And I absolutely love him. The next one I decided to treat myself with is my Monster Thai Constellation. <laughs> Look at that cream variegation. When I buy any plants that are variegated, I look for a good amount of cream or white but also a significant amount of green. With your plants, especially like a Thai constellation, you will get browning. That is, oh, no, sorry. That is completely normal. You are going to get some browning, just kind of the nature of it. So this one has not given me any browning. This leaf right here has, which again is fine. So I do love to have plants that have, you know, mostly green with a pop of the cream or the white I feel like it just looks better overall and so far so good with her I've had her for over a month and then I did show a repotting video of this baby the ties are very known for root rot so I wanted to have it in a clear container or a clear pot and that way I could see the root development and make sure that everything looked okay. And so I still see plenty of root growth happening. And so far, she's doing well. There's some more rootage right there, do you see it? Where is it? Down here. It's perfect. In September, there was the International Aeroid Show in Miami, Florida. So I met up with a few of my girlfriends there and we make it like a weekend trip. So I arrived there on Thursday and the there was a after hours party that my friend hosted. And so I went to that on Friday and then at Fairchild Gardens, there was the International Aeroid Show on Saturday. So. During that time, if you don't know, during that time you could go, you shop for plants, you meet different vendors, um, and while you are shopping, you can then branch out and go visit the tropical gardens, which is just, oh my gosh. I'm so jealous every time I go to Florida. I'm like, how are your plants just, just there? You have massive Monstera Deliciosas just in the street, like it's nothing, you know? Whereas I'm trying to keep my monsteras happy at all cost. <laughs> so while I was there though, I did purchase some plants um, and I purchased this plant from the after hours party that I went to on Friday. This is the Monstera Adansonii variegated. So it is in a super tiny pot right now. And it has some great aerial roots, so it's definitely looking for support. But it's already grown one, one, two, and this new leaf that is coming. So I figured I can show you 
how I prop it up. I'm going to support it with, I think I'm going to do a wood plank. So I'll show you how I do it. But look how pretty she is. Look at that leaf right there. Again, I love that I have a lot of green, but I do have some speckles of white. But I will be showing how I support this probably in the next video. So stay tuned if you want to see that. These next two plants definitely have more sentimental value to me. And so I, I fully understand when someone says this plant reminds me of this. Like I think that is the beauty of plants is that it's not just a plant. It's a memory and especially if you have a plant that was gifted to you or you had it during a hard time you purchased it then or you've just seen it grow from a little muffin to where it is now. That is the beauty of plants and so this is uh, for me this is a plant that I had when I was having the hardest time. I lost a lot of my plants and so I've talked about it here where I've I lost a lot of my plants after uh, my husband passed and you know during my grief process I just was not able to water my plants and if I did it was it was just in an attempt for me to get up out of bed and for me to just do something you know and so like I said I lost a lot of my plants they didn't make it through my neglect but this is one of those plants that did and this is the philodendron uh, jungle boogie. Now it started off very small and it only had, um, I think it was like two leaves or so. And so far she has grown super large and we were on the ups. We were doing great, we were on the ups and then a few months back I noticed mm, this I noticed spots like these like it started to crisp and it and the leaves started to get a little yellowing on the edges I immediately knew that it had thrips and so I used diatomaceous earth for it and it worked it worked really well actually so you know there are some leaves that are looking kind of wonky and a little discolored you can see some of the fading but she's still here and she has stuck it out with me and here we are so the jungle boogie and i just love the name like the boogie as a jungle as a jungle boogie i love it <laughs> and this last plant so the month of august was my birthday and i was trying to uh you know enjoy and celebrate and have a good time but i'm i'm pretty fresh when it comes to my grief still and so i it was hard it was really hard to spend another birthday going you know through my emotions and all the things in september so september although it was busy and there was a lot of things going on uh it's also the or would have been the birthday of my late honey so i i'm i'm still trying to get out of the emotional state of just the things and this plant <sighs> it's hard to talk about the things <laughs> This plant right here is a plant that uh, was my honey's favorite. Uh, he didn't have a lot of love for plants, but he definitely had his favorite. And he named this one Avatar. And after he passed, this plant uh, was dying of root rot. And so I managed to save just a chunk of the stem. And it's been a process since then, but here it is now. <laughs> this is a red aglionema. It is currently in Lekka. This was the only way that it made it through. I've tried every way other than perlite. I should have done perlite. I, I don't know why I decided to put it in Lekka and it's grown and it's been giving me new leaves ever since. And so I just really want it to thrive, you know? But it's weird because it feels like I have a little piece of him in this plant. 
and so I'm glad that it's doing something and I'm glad that it's growing. I want to remove it from here. I need to clean it out, but I don't want to disturb it. <laughs> oh man, it's super strange. So anyways, that is to tie in the end of September. That is my favorite. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for being here and let me know down in the comments what are your favorites for the last month, two months. I will definitely be showing how I support the Monstera at Asonii, the variegated one. So look for that in an upcoming video and just thank you so much for taking the time to be here and I will see you on the next one.